Hi, I'm Chris Runge and I'm the builder of the 1949 Glockler inspired uh, racer here. And uh, basically what I did, I've kind of been fascinated with Porsche since a very young age. And um, particularly, my, my interest was in newer cars early on and then it got more and more into the vintage stuff. And I've always been uh, inspired by the design of vintage aircraft and streamliners. And so um, in 2009, I sold one of my favorite Porsches, a 69 912, and uh, decided that the next Porsche I had to have would be something really special. And so as I researched the history and, and looking through different books and things, um, I was just really fascinated with the aircraft inspired racers that came out after World War II where guys were just hammering out alloy bodies on these little war chassis and, and making themselves, you know, they didn't have anything to their name but they wanted to go racing and that's kind of what, what really inspired me and uh, I was kind of at a time in my life where I didn't have a, a, a lot of options for cars but uh, I was able to source a, a chassis that I could make work. Um, mid-engined and with a similar running gear to what the original Glocklers used and uh, I was able to take that, modify it a little bit and then um, I drew out a, a wooden buck, just I didn't have any specs or anything to go off of but uh, I drew up this buck and started cutting wood and, and built a buck to land that chassis and I just, uh, without really any formal training at all, I, I uh, started hammering on aluminum and cutting sheets and throwing them in the garbage and redoing it and just uh, through a labor of love really, a lot of trial and error because um, I really didn't have anybody to teach me. There's a, there, throughout, throughout the process people became interested in, in what I was doing that had heard about it through friends and things like that and they would um, call me up and give me a lot of pointers which is really neat to hear the stories, guys that want to pass on that information because they know it's kind of a dying uh, work, you know, panel crafting and this kind of thing. So I was able to kind of learn through that process and hammer out this alloy body that you see here on this little racer. And uh, now I've, I've uh, was kind of talked into putting it online by some friends, and it's kind of gotten more attention than I expected. My my intention to build it was for myself to go out by myself in the middle of nowhere and just scream and to me that's what Porsches are about and uh, people got real interested and I realize it's probably more than just about me now it's it's kind of inspiring people and educating people on the history of, of Porsche and and uh, racing that kind of thing and even the wartime what what people their their passions for speed and uh, and the ability to for these guys back then with you know, they have, a lot of them didn't even have homes to go go home to, but they built race cars and went racing. So uh, the whole process has been really fun, and the car has been pretty well accepted, I guess. People, I'm surprised how excited they get about it. Uh, today was my my first time putting it out on the track, uh, just through some pretty spirited parade laps, and it's it's absolutely amazing for me. And uh, I, I'm probably just as amazed at it as the next guy because I I didn't know that I could even do something like this, but you know, it's a work of art to look at for me. It's fun to look at and then to hear it run and then to actually now get it out on the track and feel it in the turns and hear it. You can hear the aluminum moving around you and it's like no other car. And, and I think uh, I, I'd probably give anybody the keys to their brand new, new cars and take this little car over, over any of them any day because it's just a totally different experience. And, um, I've been approached to build a couple more, and so I think that's something that, that I'd like to do so that maybe a couple other people could experience this as well, because it's really a lot of fun. And I, I want it's something that I want to do for the rest of my life, for sure, is, is make little little racers like this. So uh, that's kind of my story, and, and uh, take a look at the car. I hope you guys like it. So what I did, basically, to start with, I, I sourced a, a lot of vintage components, a chassis that was worthy of, of um, accepting this type of body. It's mid-engine. It has a Volkswagen 40-horse uh, case, but it's putting out close to 68 horsepower right now. It weighs 1,010 pounds, and it's almost perfectly balanced. I mean, within just a couple pounds, corner to corner. And so what I did, I, I got the chassis all mocked up. I, the first thing I did was roll these uh, the pans down here, and you can see the seam along here. Um, I rolled up that pan, and then off of that, I built a jig to build a buck, and um, the buck is really a, 
difficult thing to explain, but when I see cars, I kind of look at them two-dimensionally almost. So you've got lines this way and lines this way. So you have high points. As you see from wheel to wheel, there's a high point that runs down uh, from the center of that wheel to the center of this wheel. And then there's a low point right in here that runs almost front to back. And then there's another high point on this section here. And so you break the car apart into highs and lows. And then uh, you build the buck accordingly. You build stringers, high stringers and low stringers, and then you, you uh, pull them together. And once the buck is complete, it kind of looked, looked pretty cool. I, I threw a car cover over it so I could actually see the car cover lay on the wooden buck and get an idea what that was going to look like. Um, then I just started, started with uh, these side panels right here. And uh, it's really hard to see, but this, there's actually a high point in this, in this side panel right in here. So, so this panel had to be blistered up on the English wheel. I had to, to cut this section and blister it up. And then uh, I, I butt welded most of this up in here, and in some areas I lap welded it, uh, overlapped it, and then bead rolled it to give it more strength. Uh, again, this I didn't know how to do any of this. I didn't even really know how to weld when I started it, so it was a real steep learning curve. But um, it's very rigid if you if you see the whole car. You know, it's uh, it's put together pretty strong. I feel pretty comfortable running it. And today on the track, I ran it harder than I ever had. It was really, really fun. But I just started section by section. Then you, you overlap your metal and then cut, draw lines, cut it, weld it. And you can see there's a lot of rough areas. Like there, there's a seam that goes across right here. You can see the high point in the weld right there. Um, and I've tried to just leave everything rough and raw. There's a lot of hammer marks. Uh, to me, it wasn't about perfection because the perfection is in the whole, you know, Kind of the work, the, the art, and the work of making the art. It's just to me that's the fun part, and that's what makes it perfect. But um, I planished and, and hammer driven with the bucking bar a lot of the rivets, so they're they're smashed in. They're an air aircraft type of rivet. There's a certain name for them. A, a aircraft mechanic was talking to me today and actually educated me on what they're called. I don't I don't really know what they're called, but. Um, I, I had to, you know, reach inside the car and use a hammer drive uh, and a bucking bar to smash down these rivets to make them super secure and solid. And um, you know, it came together piece by piece. I, I cut the nose of the car off two different times because it was not symmetrical and it was really hard to get the symmetry down between the two fenders. And so uh, a friend of mine who spent a lot of time in England as a kid told me he was in, and I don't know if this is true or not, but he told me he was in a, um, a shop uh, where there were some craftsmen making panels and the right-handed workers would work on the left side of the car and the left-handed workers would work on the right side of the car. And so this was a problem I was having. I was overpowering the right fenders with my right arm, so I, I did it left-handed. I did the, this whole shape left-handed. And I don't know if it if it really was just a bunch of uh, baloney or what, but it, it was, helped me to bring in that shape and, and really get them symmetrical. And then I, I re-welded it all back on. Um, I, I just kind of made this from scrap, that the uh, little uh, framing around the windscreen. And the funny thing is I made the seat first. That was the very first thing I made because I figured if I couldn't make a seat, I had no business even trying to make a car. <laughs> so I did the seat. It was a lot bigger and I slowly chopped it down till it kind of looks the way it does now. But yeah, it all came together. It's pretty consistent in, in the workmanship. There's a lot of things I can do a lot better, but overall it's really, really fun. I'm really happy with it, especially after taking it on the track today. And um, I don't know. I'd like to, to uh, educate other people about the process and if I can, what I've learned, I'm sure there are guys that I would love to learn more from too. So 